why a workbench? Am I supposed to work here or what? Yes? It's perfect weather. You can put some nice beams here, build a bridge, look over the lake. Well, I'm standing here at what feels like 32 degrees plus X in this gravel plant near Hanover. Now what? We still have many new vehicles that we need to showcase. Man, that's really exciting. We've actually got a car here and we don't even know if it's eventually coming to Germany, but it has some absolutely fantastic features. Okay, the Maxxis E-Deliver 5 as a van. You might have seen it with our dear colleague from Autonotizen, Bernd Conrad, who gave a detailed review. This electric van offers great performance and modern features. And here we have, quite exclusively, I believe, even in Germany specifically for all of you, the brand new Maxxis E-Deliver 5 as a van. And the big question now is just how excited would you okay. be about this new, innovative electric van? If not only a box van of the Maxxis E-Deliver 5 would come to Germany, but also this van that we are showing you today. Please write that in the comments because I know that Maxxis is watched not only from Germany and Norway, but also from China. We truly appreciate your support and are thrilled to have such an international audience tuning in. And they are ultimately responsible on behalf of Maxxis and Zeit Motor to determine if the Maxxis E-Deliver 5 has a market here, specifically as a van. And with that, welcome to an exciting new episode of Simply Electric. I would be happy if you check whether you are already part of the Simply Electric community. Maybe you could support us with a subscription and then we'll definitely see each other again when we do the driving report with this beautiful gem of a car, sharing all the details with you. So let's get started with the Maxxis E-Deliver 5 as a van. And as always, we'll start from the outside, start from the front and take a look at the new Maxxis E-Deliver 5. It's available as a box version or as here as a van. The front is nicely modern, quite sleek and sophisticated, maybe hinting at a bit of a Chinese design touch. Also from a VW ID bus, feel free to write that in the comments because Maxxis belongs to Seik Motor, the largest manufacturer in the world, Toyota Volkswagen Seik. And Seik also produces for China, for Volkswagen, and of course, they have the corresponding information. Yes, we have a nice LED daytime running light here, nice LED headlights with high and low beam function, and of course, a typical all-electric front end. Trick front. The Maxxis E-Deliver 5 is a size smaller compared to the Maxxis E-Deliver 7, which we also showcased very exclusively in the spring. I'll link the video in the description if you're looking for a larger vehicle than the ones we've covered allowing you to explore more options. No, thick, fat rims and tires. We don't have those, Stefan, do we? <laughs> Not really, Nick. <laughs> 16 inches, 195, 65, and then such an aerodynamic design where you might consider if you need more on the aftermarket to add some bigger tires, right? Yeah, I think it would suit him well. Because with all the praise this car rightfully deserves, it still somehow feels kind of puny, doesn't it? Especially when you step back, it does look a bit like Mickey Mouse. What's brilliant is this light blue metallic. We showed you the E-Deliver 7 in a silver metallic. And I think it's really cool that Maxxis is finally bringing some color into the commercial vehicle world so that we don't always just have these typical white fridge cars, but instead also get a bit of style, flair, and a touch of elegance. Yeah, when Stefan shows you the wide shot, you can see that it already has a considerable length, but I am 185 cm tall, just not quite such a build height. That means it is a bit smaller than the E-Deliver 7, but offers many, many features. Yes, we have it integrated very, very stylishly with windows here. I know that in Denmark and partly in Germany, people convert vans. That means they first come to us in Germany as boxes. Maybe it has something to do with import tariffs, who knows? And then they are basically expanded right here internally, as well as with different types of panels. And that's how the Maxxis E-Deliver 5 is as well. Actually, he was supposed to be at the IAA. We're about two or three weeks ahead of schedule, giving us the chance to offer you an exclusive and detailed look at the brand new van model. With all its proportions, with all its data, and if you are actively engaging in the comments, I know that Maxxis Germany is reading that Maxxis Europe is reading, that Maxxis in China is paying attention. And if they see that you guys are really excited about this van, I can imagine it coming to Germany. Okay. And now I'm curious to see if you find this interesting. Let's move on to the technical specifications. 5.25 meters long, 1.86 meters wide, plus side mirrors. That means it could get tight on the left lane in the construction zone. And 1.96 meters tall for comparison. I'm 1.85 meters. The wheelbase is 3.45 meters. I think it's one of the largest wheelbases we've shown for a single electric cab, Stefan. Yes. Yeah. And in between, there's a lithium iron phosphate battery pack. 
400 volt technology with 64 kilowatt hours. That's a bit too little, honestly. Well, it is naturally designed a bit for short distances for the urban environment and overland drives. So it has a daily range where it can realistically manage around 250 kilometers, right? Regardless of the weather. Well. And that might just be enough. Here at the front axle is the electric motor. Let's take a look inside in a moment, which also drives the front axle with 120 kilo, 168 horsepower, 240 newton meters of torque. That's already a bit heavy. And it has a charging port here on the front side where we can conveniently charge it with AC3 phase 11 kilodollars, which is quite efficient. So in six hours, the battery goes from empty to full. This is very important for those who charge overnight. And DC should ideally be able to charge it up to 80 kW peak, which would take approximately 42 minutes to go from 10 to 80%. Still too much. Well, I would say, especially for people in the commercial vehicle segment who might want to use it for longer distances, or even as a van for shuttle services, it will be available with up to nine seats. They might need to reload, and we actually said 2024, so anything plus or minus under 30 minutes is actually perfect, right? Sure thing. But we don't have to be sad about that. Maxis might fix that with a software update later. Well, the Volkswagen Group did the same thing back then. In terms of size, it's probably also supposed to be a bit of a nudge to Volkswagen and the ID. Buzz, right? What do you think? I think so, yeah. Fits as well. And now we want to take an in-depth look with you. Look inside. What possibilities you have there in terms of use and above all, what available space you can utilize? A typical question from an electric vehicle owner is, of course, where is it? Frank! Let's take a closer look behind this small flap. It's more an access flap than a charging one used for maintenance and other purposes. At least this one is securely hung here, can be easily opened with a cable pull. And then we basically see the entire technology of the air conditioner here, the electric motor, the charging technology, windshield washer fluid, fill cap, brake fluid, and all that stuff. And let's be honest, if we clean this up a bit, we might even be able to fit a small compartment for a type two charging cable here, right? Yeah, or over here, you can look deep inside, kind of like a small pocket, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so maybe there's still a bit of room for improvement in the aftermarket or for Maxis to provide a convenient and efficient charging cable for use at public charging stations or a wall box. Then it doesn't fly around in the trunk anymore, so that might be an option. Feel free to comment below if you think it's a cool idea or not. By the way, I couldn't find acceleration values from 0 to 100. The car is also now being freshly introduced here at the IAA transportation, so to speak, into the market. I'd say it takes about 10 or 12 seconds, give or take a little, right? 163 HP, 120 kilo, 240 Newton meters. Yes. So he can't do it in under 10? No. Cup speed is actually only 100 kmh, but I think that's actually okay. Right. So for, let's say, the urban technician who only works in the city, that's sufficient. Maxis estimates 21 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and speculates on a good 300 kilometers. But I think 250 is fair, right? I think so too. <laughs> We will test it for you in actual practical use. By the way, it comes in two different wheelbases. He usually comes to us in the L2, so with the 5.25 meters length. There is also a 4.8 meters length. Maybe also exciting for those who like it a bit more compact, because behind this flap, we have a huge loading area. If you take a look inside, Stefan will happily show you just how much space is available for all your storage needs. You have up to 3.10 meters of loading space available with a total vehicle length of 5.25 meters for the L2 model. The shorter wheelbase would still have around 2.65 meters in length. And actually, we're more used to a VW van, like around Zwei meters, give or take. Yeah, 220, 230 max. Here you get, well, it was actually quite fine, I would say. Here you can see the interior finishing very, very nicely. That means they've put in a great linoleum floor here. Looks like parquet, like wood. Very, very high quality. Feels very soft too. You can see that the car has a very high quality, beautifully designed side paneling, plus the windows. The side windows slide open for ventilation and easy access to the interior space. I'll show you that again in detail in just a moment. What might be missing here are some bold and daring brush strokes to really complete the picture. Yes, plus possibly even the optional rail seat attachment options, which can then be added to equip it with up to nine seats for more versatility. We actually have it here more as an eight seater version since we have two single seats in the front. For nine seats, you would need the double bench in the front. But I think 
like volume wise it would be a mega mega interesting story this car right definitely a lot fits in there yeah and then if we just as we saw with the e-deliver 7 not even from the gross list price everyone is electric vehicles are certainly ambitious but when you see the brilliant leasing offers and attractive financing conditions that maxis is rolling out you can actually put the gross list price aside for now and just say i'll rent one of those things for three four years for i don't know a few hundred euros that definitely makes more sense. Travel details are not yet known. Yes, what I can tell you from experience, we also have an Opel e-combo, then as a cargo version. Yes, and we really love our double wing doors. Why is that particularly important? Well, it's for all those people who might need to load a heavy pallet with the forklift into the vehicle. That theoretically wouldn't work here because of the tailgate, unfortunately, you see. However, I don't know if Maxis also plans to bring a double wing door here. That would, of course, be awesome. Worth considering, definitely. What we're also missing is the roof load capacity. I'm wondering whether you can actually get a roof rack installed up there. That is also then always interesting for the enthusiastic heating and plumbing. They usually have roof racks on them too, right, Stefan? Yes, for ladders, pipes and so on. That's right. We haven't found any information on that yet. However, we did find details regarding mm. the optional tow hitch, Stefan, when you come back. Ah, cool. And what exactly can we do? And here, Maxis doesn't mess around with the L2, okay? So while we usually find, well, I don't want to call it a ridiculous ton, 1.2 tons, it often feels like a lot. It can easily tow 1,5 tons. Yeah, very good. And that's really important for many craftsmen just to be able to tow their trailer with all their equipment. And I think 1.5 tons is already a brake towing capacity you can work with, right? Certainly tidy, yes. I couldn't find the nose weight which is important since some have heavy nose weights when towing trailers. So we also have to wait for the comprehensive data sheet after the world premiere at the IAA for Germany to get full specifications. Yes, what we always have without exception is a practical sliding door on the passenger side of the vehicle. It opens manually. Do you need it electric, Stefan? I don't think so. We don't do any of that fancy stuff, although it might be available as an optional feature. You can see it here from the paneling. It's definitely been set up so that you might optionally also get a sliding door on the passenger side. Right, that could indeed be very true. Exactly, and then we can just go in and simply close the sliding door, Stefan. I'll show the sliding window again, okay? Thoughts? Yeah. Can you take a look outside? Of course, we have suboptimal standing height here since we don't have a high roof, limiting the vertical space inside. But you can see right here, you can very, very nicely, hello there, open this little sliding window here and then get a little bit of refreshing airflow coming through. And that's a wonderful story. By the way, Stefan, what's also brilliant, we really have to show it again. You'll definitely love it here with the van. Of course, thinking about passengers. Up here, take a look. There's an extra climate menu to personalize the temperature settings for added comfort. That means we have the two zones in the front for driver and passenger. And then again, controllable from the front. And also here, of course, these two in the back with ventilation nozzles everywhere there, where then seats will be placed. And that is, of course, brilliant. Yeah, of course, everyone can set it up the way they want. Both to cool in summer and heat in winter. What I haven't found here is a panoramic roof like that. But honestly, we really don't want to overdo it, do we now? <laughs> but look at how elegantly Maxis designs the rear seat trim in the commercial vehicle here. Well, others can't even claim to say something like that in a premium vehicle. Nice faux leather here along with the pocket to store something conveniently. Additionally, there is a nice mat here that basically covers all of this over again. I must say, this is just classy. It's high quality. And you can really tell the experience of Zyg Motor and Maxxis in vehicle construction. Yes. Outside, we've shown you everything. Let's go inside. Where is Stefan? I'm down here with the camera. I think this is already prepped for the door at the back. For the driver right you can see that the sliding door for the driver's side is already prepared and ready to install yes let's do the window check this is single glazing but that doesn't necessarily have to be bad because we've also found that it isn't always decisive also for excellent interior noise levels yes i believe the door trim is in fact very very well crafted look this is a plastic a hard plastic that actually isn't foamed at all but it's well made here in this mint green then again with this trim well, plastic isn't just plastic. Or, nah, some real diffs. But it's really quite hot here with the oh, 32 shit. kilowatts. Yes, let's continue on here with the armrest section next. I'm sweating today too, sorry, but it's unbearably hot here at the gravel plant. All nicely done with faux leather, softly padded. Also a nice big handle. Here, even the chemist's fries bag fits. We have two electric windows here with central locking. And over here, I find a modern lever. 
It's beautifully and seamlessly integrated into this armrest segment. Here we have hard plastic again, but look at how high quality it's made here with this grain. So it works, right? Here's a simple net, but it's enough. So you can also put a big water bottle in here like I did and the sunglasses. A box so that we have good sound. And here, Stefan, please take a look. Then you have solved the mirror adjustment, headlight range control, and of course the various functions for the driving lights, also including the automatic driving light system. I would say come on inside and we'll show our viewers the dashboard and its features. A warm welcome to the dashboard here in the Maxxis eDeliver 5. Well, we don't have a head-up display, but it's actually not common in the commercial vehicle segment. To my knowledge, the ID bus doesn't have that either. We have a nice big bike display with all the essential information we need. And then we have a nice multifunction steering wheel, but unfortunately not covered with faux leather, but made of plastic. That's still more common in the commercial vehicle segment. I would have liked it if Maxxis had given us a bit of faux leather here, right? Yeah, that would have been nice. You also have a nice control here for vehicle functions like the home button, changing stations, volume up and down, taking calls. So a Bluetooth hands-free system, plus Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wired and wireless for easy device and app integration. We're wirelessly connected. I'll show you later. Missing here is an adjustable steering wheel which is surprising given the car's other features. That would of course also be nice if we could change it a little bit more in height and distance again. The seat is adjustable in any case. The backrest, seat height and seat distance are all quite good, enhancing overall comfort significantly for longer periods of time. Yes, here we have a nice infotainment display, um, which is supposed to get a software update. So this is basically the pre-production version. Here we've even got a 360 degree camera system on board. Impressive. That means we can walk very nicely around the car. We also have the corresponding guidelines in reverse gear. And of course, we can also check well if we are parking nicely along the curb. We have a great view straight ahead here as well, which is sometimes important when driving a larger vehicle in a tight gate passage approaches, meets the road on the sidewalk and has an exceptionally good view. Absolutely. Just through the windows here in the A pillar, this slightly elevated seating plus the camera makes, I think, 5.25 meters. Very easy to drive. You can also add a nice guideline at the front. And this way you have various useful adjustment options if, for instance, you move forward and are unsure of your positioning when you steer right. But you know, most of you are experienced drivers. Yes, and of course we have the classics here, plus new models featuring the latest in automotive tech and comfort. What I haven't found now is the navigation. We just have the phone option here, then via Bluetooth. But I didn't go ahead and activate it because you see I have wireless Apple CarPlay available right here. And where you naturally have your navigation system, then with Google Maps, you can easily find your way around. So you see very nicely, we are in the Marl Pit in Hanover, Miesburg. Anderton with turquoise colored water. Isn't this awesome here? Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. There's a pontoon. We could head out onto the lake for a bit, right? Oh, God. No, we're from Mecklenburg, not flat Tyrolians here. Yeah, we are <laughs> quite big. We always stay in a continuous one take and want to properly test the sound system with all of you. So we've turned it on for you. Testing is important for quality. And let's go ahead and see which particular sound resonates and spreads here, shall we? Okay. Sounds pretty decent, doesn't it? Yes, that should be enough. I should also mention the speakers are actually located in the front section. I don't even know if there's an additional sound package available to also get some really good speakers in the back area, I think, because that would be really close with nine people. Yeah, so the folks in the back row can understand too. But with the reflection, you then have the best chance to use the Maxxis eDeliver 5 effectively and achieve excellent outcomes. Yeah, a nice climate menu where you can easily adjust the front row left and right or in automatic mode. Additionally, you have a convenient switch at the back specifically for the rear area, plus the second control level, which Stefan can show you again. Here in the headliner, we have already shown you how it functions. So I think you can make excellent use of everything here. Otherwise, it's a clear and user-friendly menu that is easy to navigate. You've got Bluetooth music here, there's a built-in radio, but no in-car navigation system. For that, you would always have to use CarPlay or Android Auto accordingly and mirror it. Yes, we have nice ventilation nozzles here on this level, plus dummies below like a double layer. Cool. We also have a nice storage compartment for the passenger here. 
which is, I think, important for you to have some storage options. We don't have a glove compartment here, but more like an open compartment. Then again with Stefan, when you go into the horizontal plane with the camera, then the buddy downwards from the back, you can nicely see this plane here. Then we have marked here two easy to fold out cup holders for convenience. So you can put your coffee mug or water bottle in there. The large bottle also fits. And then basically we have two USB-A ports and a 12 volt socket here. Yes. And below that, there's a small net. Um, here's a small mesh pocket to store keys, coins or other essentials, keeping them always within reach. By the way, there's a stop and play button here, quite similar to the ones in VW vehicles. There's like a pause and a chime. What's cool is this rubber I, floor I, right I, here I, I, because it's stylish, it comfortable and easy to clean. It's nice and soft. Unfortunately, it got a bit dirty from the gravel pit here. You can clean it really well, right? Absolutely. Just use a damp cloth. No problem. And here once more is some additional storage stuff and a compartment to stash various things. Of course, it would be cool to have an optional element here, like a large center armrest for extra comfort and support. So just a console. <laughs> Otherwise, you also have a nice armrest here in the driver's seat. And that gives me great ergonomics. And I could definitely see myself leisurely cruising around with you guys, right? That would definitely work perfectly. The view through the passenger door gives you a nice sense of the space. Here too, you can see the beautiful mix of materials on the dashboard. That's hard plastic, but due to the grain and the light color, it looks valuable. Looks good. The only thing I don't understand is this mint green shade. Why didn't they mirror the light blue color from the exterior design? Tough, right? No idea. Probably another design idea, but you can see here very, very well this high quality rubber floor. You can see, I think very, very nicely, also again here in the structure, the passenger seat. But I don't really understand, Maxis, why is there no height adjustment for the passenger seat? It really would have been quite nice. That's kind of a typical Asian problem. Thinking of all the bells and whistles, but not of an adjustable passenger seat height. Too bad. In this particular case, there's the armrest again. Adjustable in various positions for the passenger seat. You can adjust the backrest angle. And we actually already have a sports seat here integrated like this. Almost looks like a racing seat integrated headrest, then here the pass-through, then a nice faux leather surface here. Again, this mint green combined with the light gray. Decent lumbar support. Thigh support is somewhat moderate overall, but this light gray faux leather does look chic. That definitely looks high quality, yes. Below everything is anthracite again. That reflects very, very beautifully. Here with the B-pillar trim and the headliner, light gray at the top, dark gray at the bottom. But here, of course, it could also um, rattle once again. Well, that's just how it is. Everyone has to live with that or not. What's really, really nice is in the commercial vehicle segment, we have another level up here. I actually wanted to show this earlier where you can really nicely store things up here that you don't currently need. Maybe they could have added more compartments to the dashboard since it's mostly unused space. Don't you think they could have utilized that space better? What do you think? Yeah, maybe some kind of shelf or something yeah. so things don't always scrape back and forth. But otherwise, I have to say, for a commercial vehicle, a very, very nice interior. Almost like in a car, right? Correct. Unfortunately, we only have the chance to drive around the quarry with the Maxxis E-Deliver 5, as it's the only available vehicle for this specific test at this location. To get an initial impression of driving this car, but especially on these rough roads, you can clearly see how the suspension is tuned and adjusted. And that's actually pretty comfortable, don't you think? Yes, for the long wheelbase, you handle that well. So when going over rough terrain, it handles well. It's important to know if you plan to take it off road with all your gear, as having this knowledge can really improve your experience. That this little bumpy road with its ups and downs doesn't phase the Maxxis E-Deliver 5 at all, does it, Stefan? Nope, it handles everything smoothly and effortlessly without any issue at all. I wouldn't call it that either. He can do it. And when we talk a little about this short journey, you do sit quite comfortably in the seats, don't you? Yeah, you're really sitting quite comfortably. I wouldn't have thought that. Well, I think if you had some seats in the back, you could also travel very nicely and comfortably with the whole family with five, six, seven, even eight people, right? What are you doing? And with a loading length of 3.10 meters, there should actually still be plenty of space here to maybe even fit some luggage in the back, right? Above all, if you're variable at the back, that means if you can take out individual elements, you'll have a lot in. 
Yes, by the way, they also blasted a significant part of the gravel plant here today just so they could ultimately dig it all away. That's also a form of removal. And it's really exciting to be able to experience something like this firsthand, like an actual explosion and all the related events that come with it. Yes, exactly. It grumbled quite a bit indeed, didn't it? Yes, the whole floor was vibrating. And yes, I have to be honest with you, I am initially impressed by the Maxxis E-Deliver 5 and super, super excited. Then, on to the box van, which we hope to show you very soon in Hamburg, in a classic review with a detailed driving report and thorough insights. And if you comment and show interest in such a van, who knows, maybe it will come to Germany one day, right? It would be wonderful to see it here and test it thoroughly. That would be really nice. And with that being said, we are now at the conclusion for today. I personally think this is an interesting and viable alternative to the current vans on the market. I could easily imagine that Maxxis could here offer an interesting price performance ratio for the E-Deliver 5 and thus also appeal to many families with such a versatile van, right? I think so too. So there's a lot that can be done. Because what would be the competition? The VW ID bus, the Mercedes EQV, the Stellantis vehicles with the ESA4 and so on and so forth. And they are of course quite ambitious price-wise as well. Right, so that's where Maxxis could probably fill a gap. And what Maxxis, surprisingly as, a Chinese manufacturer does damn well a super attractive leasing and financing conditions. Well... Keep your eyes open for great deals. Did you hear about that? The Maxxis T90 pickup? Yeah, it's now apparently available for 199 euros a month on leasing. That's awesome. Somehow 24 months with, I mean, 5,000 kilometers. But it can probably do more too. That's a real bargain without any down payment. So maybe that's a secret tip for you if you're looking for an electric pickup. Maxxis T90 Emo EV is now available for leasing from 199 euros. Definitely take a look. Visit the relevant Maxxis pages of your Maxxis dealers. And with that, we've reached the end of today's video featuring the Maxxis E-Deliver 5. And I must say, it's been a pleasure showing you this fantastic vehicle. That's a great story showing how you can get it as a panel van here and hopefully also as a van with up to eight or nine seats perfect for both commercial and family use as i mentioned please write in the comments if you're interested in such a car so the folks at maxis can get a sense of it whether or not they should also import the van yeah i really hope that you enjoyed the video feel free to give the video a big thumbs up please also check if you are part of the electric driver community so you won't miss any of our future videos including the detailed review and driving report of the van i'd say it's going to be exciting thanks for watching stay healthy and see you soon you're ollie you stefan well i don't know understand right what's that why is it that in the van sector they avoid using a shark fin but in a passenger car they always put a bump on top right which has more so roof area. Do you think there's a roof rack? I'd find it cool. That would be pretty cool, yeah.